My name is Ms. Nelson. I'm one of the school counselors here at Wanderbear High School, and I am here to welcome you to the Underclassmen Information Night. So we'll go ahead and get started. So who do you need to know? Um, this year, all of our counselors will be serving 9th through 12th grade students. So first we have Mr. Peppers, and um, he'll be serving students with the last names A through E. Ms. Bruce will be serving students with the last names F through K. Ms. Watson will be serving students with the last names L through Q, and I will be serving students with the last names R through Z. Um, in the Career Center, we have Ms. Long, who is here to help us with the dual enrollment process, also um, any college or career questions that you may have. Um, she's the best person to go to first. Um, this year, we have Mr. Derek Maxwell as our principal. This is his first full year with us, and we're super excited to have him. We also have some assistant principals, Ms. Raper, Ms. Or Coach Noblet, who is also our athletic director, Mr. Craig Martin, and Ms. Barbara Smith. Um, we also, in the counseling office, we have Ms. Gwen Tilly, who is our records clerk, um, and we'll go into a little bit more about what she does later in our slides. And also, Ms. McElroy is our registrar. So what we usually do in the counseling office, it varies from day to day, um, but here's just a quick summary of what we can do for you and your students. Um, we offer personal and social counseling. Um, we also help out with some testing, um, grade requ graduation requirements, conferences, credit recovery. Um, we also help coordinate hospital homebound services as well as 504 meetings and um, determination. We also work with a little bit with Ms. Long and your student when it comes to dual enrollment advisement, specifically work with course selection for the upcoming semesters. We also um, go into a little bit of college and career exploration through our junior and senior meetings. Um, and we'll go into our junior meetings a little later. Um, we also go into classrooms um, during a normal time um, and offer some activities with our students. Um, we also have some access to get you guys set up with community resources outside of our school building. So how you'll see us, um, right now we know we're in a little wonky of a time, um, but, but you will go to our bit.ly um, WBHS counseling to make a, an appointment online. Right now we have the two options of having a Google meet with us or we can set up a phone meeting. Um, if your child is in group A or group B, they can meet with us face to face if they're currently in the school building. Right now we aren't allowing parents into um, the office, but if your student is here, they are more than welcome to meet with us one on one. Um, parents, please contact your um, child's counselor through phone or email if you need to get in touch with us. New this year as well, um, you can contact Ms. Gwen Tilly through the um, through the online scheduler as well. Um, and it's going to be a request through an appointment. So Ms. Tilly can help you out with transcripts, enrollment letters, your social security paperwork, auto insurance, and also withdrawals. So you can email her um, at this email below, or you can also go through our online schedule. Some upcoming events, we have the Pro Fair. Um, registration for that opens on September 15th. Um, there are actually two mini fairs going on. Um, one will be in October and the other will be in November. They're all going to be virtual. Um, so we have a little bit more information coming out about that shortly. We have a financial aid night, which will be October 6th. It will be virtual through the Georgia Student Finance Commission. Um, we have no school on October 12th. So look out for that students. On October 14th, we'll have the PSAT. You can still register through your My School Bucks account um, under the school store. Report cards will also be coming out October 14th. Um, AP exam registration, um, the deadline is coming up for um, fall only and or year long. Um, students, they, can they need to register by um, November 13th. Um, registration should be done through total registration. And as you all know, we'll have Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving break holiday on the dates of November 23rd to the 27th. For our junior class, um, we will be having junior meetings during the spring of 2021. Hopefully those will all be face-to-face. -face. Um, students will also schedule those appointments through our online scheduler. In these meetings, we typically cover graduation requirements and post-secondary plans, any career information that we can go over with our students. Meetings are going to be tailored towards your 
individual students' um, goals and their needs. Um, so parents are always invited to come, but they aren't required. Um, so juniors, go ahead and start thinking of what you want to go over in the meetings with us so we can make sure that that, plan, that meeting is as efficient as possible for you. So we have our graduation requirements. We have a minimum of 24 credits in order to graduate. So you need four credits in each of your core classes of language, arts, math, science, and the social studies. Um, we would love for you guys to each complete a pathway, which is um, three classes of one field. So for instance, um, healthcare has intro to healthcare, essentials of healthcare, and allied health. That is one pathway. Um, we also have pathways like chorus or art or um, oral language like Spanish or French. Um, and also students will typically gather four electives by the time they graduate. Usually they end up with more, but four is our minimum. Um, just as a reminder, two world language credits are required if you um, are intending to go to a four-year college in the state of Georgia. We typically recommend that students begin their world language classes in 10th or 11th grade. Um, in addition to those graduation requirements, we have promotion requirements. Um, as you transition from 9th to 10th grade, in order to be considered a 10th grader within our system, um, our students need to have at least six credits under their belt. Um, in order to be promoted to 11th grade, our students must have 13 credits, and this is where it gets a little bit more specific. In those 13 credits, you must have two English credits. So by this time, if we're in the correct order, it's going to be ninth and 10th grade lit, um, in addition to one math credit, one science credit, and one social studies credit. Once our students have achieved that, they're looking towards the 12th grade um, credit requirements, which will be 18 in total. I'm Mr. Peppers, um, and I have students' last names A through E, and I'll pick up the next part of the presentation here with credit recovery. So some students may not be able to complete all of their graduation requirements at the time they took the, um, the courses. So if they failed something in ninth grade, uh, by the time they become a junior, they may need to re uh, or go get that credit and uh, look at some of the credit recovery options. Here in our county, um, Foothills Charter High School um, is available for students to attend, and that is for $150 per credit or $75 per half unit if a student may need that. Um, you would see your counselor for a recommendation form, and then at that point make an appointment with Foothills to begin uh, working on those courses. What we ask students is that you just make sure you pay attention to course completion deadlines um, for graduation. This happens a lot when seniors are taking uh, multiple things to recover, so make sure they're eligible for graduation, so just kind of look out for those things. If you're handling this as an underclassman, typically those graduation deadlines um, won't be as uh, as dire to, to kind of uh, complete and everything like that. So next thing to think about would be your graduation testing requirements. The Georgia milestones, as we know, may be exempted for a few things this year, but if you have courses uh, as the ones listed, you can see where milestones are attached to different things uh, throughout the course of a student's high school career. The HOPE and Zell Miller programs. HOPE Scholarship is a four-year college program, and students must have a 3.0 HOPE GPA, which the calculations include academics, and this is your language arts, math, science, social studies, foreign language, and then also some of the uh, academic electives like psychology or mythology, those would go into those calculations. This pays approximately 85% of tuition at public institutions. This does not include anything that would go towards your room and board, um, any other fees, books, and things like that. This is strictly for tuition. And then the awards at private school may actually vary um, just based on what the private school is offering uh, for their tuition and seeing how that can equalize either for the HOPE scholarship or sometimes it's a little less than things. The Zell Miller scholarship is the next tier. So again, for four-year colleges and universities, student must uh, have a minimum of a 3.7 HOPE GPA and then the 1,200 on the SAT or a 26 on the ACT in one sitting. That doesn't mean that it 
has to be just one time only that you take it and you make those scores. Uh, one sitting would mean that maybe you took it in November, maybe you took it then in January, and at least at one of those points, you met the 1,200 or the 26 on the ACT. There, uh, there's no super scoring involved, so they can't combine scores. Uh, that's what that one sitting would, would represent. At this moment, we're still waiting to hear back from the Georgia Student Finance Commission about the SAT and the ACT updates, and if that will change, we know that uh, right now it's gone test optional for seniors to um, report their SAT and their ACT. What we don't know is how this will affect um, seniors for this next you know, bit of applying for the Zell Miller Scholarship um, and how that also might affect underclassmen, namely the juniors. Um, and see, you know, where we'll go from here as we know this pandemic has kind of disrupted the flow of a lot of different um, things, but this will be kind of the next update that we kind of look forward to hearing from and how that might impact um, underclassmen such as this next uh, junior class for 2022. This, uh, however, Zell Miller will pay for 100% of tuition there at public institutions. And again, the awards um, for private schools may vary just based on institution to institution. Spend a moment talking about the HOPE academic rigor requirements and um, students must earn a minimum of four credits from the academic uh, courses of rigors and that's uh, they're listed below prior to graduation from high school and this is within the same con like the constructs of advanced math, um, some advanced science, foreign language, or students um, actually being able to be a part of uh, advanced placement courses, AP, or dual enrollment. And a lot of times I'll get questions from students or parents asking or saying, you know, I've never taken AP courses, dual enrollment, or I've never done honors. How can I still be eligible for HOPE? And uh, simply, if you look there on that example, um, students will take Algebra 2 typically their junior year. Students will typically take physics their junior year, as well as if you're college bound, you're looking to take those two levels of the same foreign language, so Spanish two, and then human anatomy could be uh, an upper level um, science. So students may take human anatomy, they may take chemistry, um, they could take pre-calculus. These are all things that you could do and meet those four um, requirements, four credit requirements, and not actually have to even go into um, honors or AP formats. Next thing to talk about would be the Hope and Zell Miller grants. These are kind of like, um, you know, the no excuses that I would say for students to continue their education um, once they've completed their high school diplomas and things like that. The uh, Hope grant, this works towards two-year institutions, mostly the technical institutions here in the state of Georgia. There's no high school GPA minimum requirement. As long as you have your high school diploma, you graduated and you apply to these institutions, you're eligible for the HOPE grant. And uh, once you're there, you maintain a 2.0 during your program. So that's either your certificate or your diploma program. And you will uh, cover basically a portion of your tuition um, that looks like about 80%. Um, when I roll through this scenario with students, um, generally it's about $1,200 to attend um, tuition for a full-time student. Uh, here in the technical systems, and then uh, after the HOPE grant has been applied, that tuition amount uh, jumps down to about uh, $228. So you can see that's a pretty big um, impact. You go from paying $1,000 or more to just a little bit over $200 um, based on that tuition amount. And then the next year to that is the Zell Miller grant for two-year institutions. Again, no high school minimum GPA to be enrolled in this program. You would start there at the HOPE grant situation, but you must maintain a 3.5 during the program. So if after your first semester um, there at the technical school, you have a 3.5 GPA, what will happen is they will pay you back what you paid out of pocket the first semester and pay 100% of your tuition moving forward in that program certificate or diploma. And uh, this, again, covered the stand, standard tuition basis. It's not really for your books or your fees or anything like that. One other uh, point would be the HOPE Career Grant. These are uh, available to certain students who apply for programs and are pursuing um, degrees in uh, majors that align with industries that Georgia has identified 
um, that we need more skilled workers. And so this could be upwards of $500 per semester that a student attends um, just by getting into a, um, uh, an enlisted major that Georgia identifies we need more skilled workers. Calculating uh, grade point average, so the GPA and things like that. We think this is important for students to get a good base on and a good grasp um, as a freshman and as they you know, continue to move throughout high school to kind of know that what they're taking impacts you know, their flow to their high school year. It does hit their transcript. Um, these grades are final. These are the things that end up uh, going towards colleges. So officially, Weinerboro High School um, reports GPA on the 100-point weighted scale. So uh, their 100-point GPA, that's what gets reported to colleges. That's the official format here in Barrow County. Um, to know what goes into that, if your student ever takes an honors class, it would be the raw grade that they um, earn in that course, and then you times that by 1.075. If the student's looking at uh, dual enrollment opportunities or AP opportunities, you take the raw grade and times that by 1.10. Uh, the raw grade is what goes on the transcript, and this is what also uh, colleges may decide to apply you know, their different calculations uh, from, but what we'll end up doing is uh, creating that weighted GPA for students. Class rank is based off of that 100 uh, point weighted GPA for students, and that gets calculated at the end of every semester. So right now, none of the grades that students are working on is actually affecting their GPA. Only when we get finalized grades in December, we move into January, will uh, grade point averages change. Hope GPA scale, we talked a little bit about it, but they go off the 4.0 scale. It's unweighted except for the AP and dual enrollment classes that students would attempt. The Georgia Student Finance Commission will then go back and give quality points towards um, where they deem necessary. And again, it's the uh, English, math, science, social studies, foreign language, and academic electives only. Um, the, uh, the scales there for GPA, an A would be a 4.0, a B is a 3.0, C is a 2.0, and F, that's a zero. And uh, just again, to kind of highlight the fact that GPA is cumulative, goes throughout all of high school for whatever credit is received. Um, just to kind of put those points out there when you're thinking about how GPA is important and really kind of drives a lot of the conversation towards how successful a student is being here in high school. One of the points, not all of them. Dual enrollment is a program I've mentioned a couple of times when you see that DE typically um, stands for dual enrollment. Uh, here at Winder Barrow, uh, Ms. Liz Long in our Career Resource Center, um, she is our Winder Barrow coordinator for dual enrollment. This is where students can earn college credit while working on their high school diploma. The uh, dual enrollment funds for the state of Georgia cover the tuition, the fees, and the required textbooks. Um, all students, uh, are eligible, but you must meet the institutional standards uh, individually uh, for admission. So there may be an age requirement. There definitely are uh, different GPA and uh, SAT and ACT requirements based on universities and technical systems. So you just want to make sure you're looking up that correct information for what your students are interested in uh, to, to pursue dual enrollment. If you got any questions, you can definitely ask your counselor. Uh, start with Ms. Long there. The process for dual enrollment would be contacting Ms. Long to express the interest, then filling out the dual enrollment application, um, take required entrance exams. Again, we've mentioned the SAT and the ACT, but this could also just mean taking the AccuPlacer um, and then apply to the institution. You can get Ms. Long to help you with any assistance that you need there. Um, once you're accepted, you would meet with your counselor for advisement just to talk about the classes and the choice that you're, you're wanting to make for the, the upcoming semester and also how that is fitting into your graduation plan. Um, you contact the college with specifics about admissions and course detail questions um, to get on their systems like uh, Blackboard is what Lanier Tech uses. So you want to definitely get into an orientation there at the college. And then uh, one of the things that we would require is that a student bring or submit their course schedule so then we can actually put that on their one high school course schedule. 
just as we kind of wrap up the conversation with dual enrollment, is that we would just ask students and families to carefully consider the fit for the student as, the, as well as the preparedness um, for those college level uh, courses and the work that's involved, as well as the expectations. Um, when students roll into that dual enrollment class setting, I mean, you are no different than anybody in that class. If it's uh, somebody that's going back to college who may be in their 30s, um, a college student who's you know in their 20s, or again, another dual enrollment student that they're with, there's no separation, there's no differentiation. It's just you are a college student in the class and your expectations are to be met with everyone else there. Um, the students should def definitely consider where schools um, that you're going to apply to after high school and what they may prefer as a uh, apart from AP curriculum or dual enrollment. So that could factor into some of the decision making that sometimes that we have conversations here in the counseling office about. And then other factors to consider would be transportation, you know, making sure that it's easily um, uh, accessible with your schedule, either, you know, in an AM or PM setting or uh, the other things would just be the fit to Weiner Barrow's schedule, your extracurriculars, your job, uh, not really wanting to impede on any other things that you have going, but uh, trying to just incorporate that into your day um, as best as possible. Just to try to keep all those different scenarios and factors in mind when you're kind of enrolling in dual enrollment. And being as flexible as possible because sometimes the classes are structured and you just have to make adjustments towards it. Um, but it's definitely a great program. Uh, for students to take advantage of if, again, you, you feel prepared enough for it and it fits um, for your schedule. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ms. Watson. I'm the current counselor for students with the last names L through Q. To the sophomores and juniors out there, you probably remember me as your ninth grade counselor when you were in ninth grade, but I now serve students, last names L through Q. And so I'm here to talk about some keys to success on how to be successful um, at Winder Barrow High School. So for students, developing time management and study strategies is key. So being able to balance not only school, which is a huge priority, but also extracurriculars, work, volunteering, things like that is key in order to um, be successful at school. And so having study strategies as well can help. Staying organized and taking good notes, um, making sure you don't have all your papers in the frizzy or anything like that. Um, but having everything organized, like in a binder, folders, things like that. Showing up and having no zeros is super important because a zero in a grade um, in any of your classes can really bring down a grade. Um, so it's better to have a 50 over a zero because a zero can, when they're factored in, um, can be, bring your grade down a lot. Communicating early and often so whenever you have questions, make sure you reach out to your teachers, whether it's email or in person, Google Meet, things like that. And of course, setting a goal and making plans on how to achieve them. So if your goal is to get two A's and two B's this semester, recognize the steps you have to take. So that might be making sure you attend tutoring sessions, making sure that you're studying 30 minutes a day for each class, things like that. For families, um, so super important to check parent portal, check grades. Students should do this as well. But families can keep on top of grades. And if you have any questions, ask your teacher what you're seeing. And again, communicating with teachers and counselors. We are here to help support students and teachers are here to support students too. Staying connected through websites and social media, super helpful. We post on social media often, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Our website also has super important information as well. And then helping your student think about a plan for their future. I know that oftentimes parents or guardians or families have certain expectations for students, but ultimately what a student you know, is interested in, but it's a student's effort that's going to bring them to graduation, to that 50 yard line. And similarly, what will happen after high school. So making sure everyone's working as a team together. And even though kids are you know, in high school, they're obviously more independent than elementary or middle schooler, but they're still kids and they still need to figure out what is best for them as well. So making a plan for ninth grade. Um, so in the fall, we suggest for students to meet their school counselor, to set goals, to figure out classes and checking schoolwork regularly, talking about getting involved outside of class, 
when a senior, you know, is starting to apply to college and they realize they haven't really got involved, it really shows commitment when you start in ninth grade. Also, you can take the PSAT 8-9, which is a test that helps see how students will do on the PSAT, which is a good practice for the SAT, which is has been an integral part in applying for college. And in the spring of ninth grade, you can discuss next year's classes during registration, start doing a preliminary research on colleges and technical schools to see what um, the student's interested in, see how much you need to save for college. It's better to start thinking about saving your college now in the ninth grade, and then you can work your way into um, different um, ways to support yourself in college. Because if you start now, you realize, hey, by being committed to a certain organization that I've been in for four years, they're going to see a commitment. They'll see, you know, you're applying to a scholarship and have that commitment for that scholarship, as an example. And then making summer plans with meaningful activities, whether it's volunteering or working or tutoring, um, playing sports, things like that. And then making a plan for 10th grade. So in the fall, again, setting goals for the school year, getting involved, again, checking schoolwork regularly, brainstorming what schools you might be interested in, taking the PSAT or NMSQT is free in 10th grade, and then exploring careers and majors as well. So you don't have to know what you want to do in 10th grade necessarily, but starting to build um, that interest and seeing maybe I could be interested in studying this in college, or maybe I want to work to this diploma or this certificate, things like that. In the spring of 10th grade, making a, a college visit, maybe the first one, so you can start um, exploring what you might, where you might want to go. Begin building a college list, again, collecting information about the cost of college, whether it's tuition and housing and fees, and discussing next year's classes. So a lot of times students in 11th grade start taking more and more advanced classes, and so embracing those challenges that come with taking more advanced classes. And again, planning a meaningful summer activity. So making a plan for 11th grade. So in the fall, definitely meet with your school counselor. Um, again, setting goals for the school year, maybe shadowing professionals and careers that you might be interested in, preparing for the ACT or SAT, taking the PSAT, and continue to work on being involved in after-school activities. In the spring, you'll have your official junior meeting. And so in junior meetings, we talk about not only classes you still need to graduate, um, GPA, rank, things like that, but also talk about your plans for after high school, whether you're interested in doing a two-year diploma or two-year degree, four-year degree, military, workforce, um, things like that. And then refining your college list, so the list that you've been building on slowly but surely throughout ninth and 10th grade, now you can solidify more what schools you're interested in applying to. And then taking the SAT and or ACT, so Right now, of course, things are up in the air because of COVID, but we could see that even if ACT and SAT aren't necessarily required for the current 12th graders, it might be a requirement for 11th graders that will become 12th graders next year. And so preparing for the ACT and SAT with um, preparatory materials, websites, things like that, and then taking that step to take that test. And then solidifying next year's classes, you know, senior year, you wanna make sure not only you have everything ready to graduate, but also for taking advanced classes as well. And then researching scholarships. There are a lot of scholarships out there and it's important to start the search for them so you can get that free money. Also attending college fairs and events. So we have the Pro Fair at Winder Barrow High School or at other, they've had at Appalachia as well. Um, getting involved in college fairs so you can see what you might, where you might be interested in going to or where you might want to study and then making the most of your summer, whether it's college visits or researching or conferences, anything to keep you um, engaged in not only your college search, but also extracurriculars as well. So building a college list, it's super important to recognize where you might wanna be and where you might not wanna be. So for example, campus size or student population, there are colleges that have that have a population as big as Winder Barrow with maybe 2,000 kids. 
There are schools out there that have 40,000 students, and there's a big difference between the two of them. So making sure you understand, you know, what size school you would want to go to. Location. Going to school in the middle of downtown Atlanta is a lot different from going to school, like, in the mountains of Georgia. And that's just talking about in the state of Georgia. There are so many different places that students can go to college. And so knowing where you want to be, if you want to be in a big city, if you want to go to a rural school, if you want something in between. And again, talking about cost, whether it's tuition, um, because college is expensive and it depends on if you have a private school or a public school. So recognizing those differences in costs, but not only that, talking about financial aid. So how much you can afford and how much you could possibly get from the free application for federal student aid, FAFSA. Scholarships, like I touched upon earlier, um, knowing what money you could get from different scholarships or grants you apply to, and then also understanding what schools offer what programs and majors. So not every school is going to have an engineering program, for example, and so making sure you recognize what schools have, the program you're interested in, and how strong that program is there. And of course, you're not always going to be just in the classroom when you're in college. So there's a lot of different on-campus activities you might be interested in as well, such as Greek life or sports or intramurals, club sports. There's so many different activities that students can join when they're in college. And so georgiafutures.org is a very helpful website that we have. Um, it helps for planning, whether it's for careers or for colleges with financial aid. There's a lot of information about HOPE scholarship information, your HOPE GPA. That's where you find out what your HOPE GPA is. You can learn about what Zell Miller is on the website as well. And then you can apply to in-state schools on georgiafutures.org, and you can send your transcripts from Georgia Futures. And then there's also a really helpful website called Big Future, which is through collegeboard.org. Those are the people that um, support AP classes, SAT classes. And so on this website, I really like it because it's uniform. So you can find colleges and you can see exactly, oh, this is the GPA that this school is looking for. This is the SAT that this school is looking for. All the information is in one place. And not only that, you can explore different careers or the majors that um, relate to those careers, how to pay for college, making a plan, and there's also special resources for parents on this website as well. Hi, everybody. My name is Angela Bruce, and I am one of the counselors here at Winder Barrow High School. Wanted to talk to you about some testing opportunities that are available to you that will be coming up in 9th, 10th, 11th grade. So one of the ones that is available to students is the PSAT. Um, and MSQT stands for National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. And so we will be offering the test here at Winder Barrow on October 14th. Um, it's available to 9th, 10th, and 11th grade students. It is free for all 10th grade students. Um, 9th grade students have to pay for it. It's $15 for the PSAT um, 8-9. And then juniors have to pay for it. Um, it's $20. Waivers are available for juniors. Um, the sign-up is through My School Bucks. Now, even if you are a 10th grader, in order to take it, you still have to sign up through My School Bucks, even though there is no fee for you to take it as a 10th grader. Um, we encourage definitely all 10th graders to take it since it's free. We encourage juniors to take it because it is the National Merit, Scholar Fine, National Merit Scholarship um, qualifying test, which means you have to take it during your junior year in order to, to enter the National Merit Scholar. So the next thing that I'll talk about is the AccuPlacer. The AccuPlacer is used for um, the technical college system. So technical colleges use it for um, admissions purposes and it's used for dual enrollment eligibility. Um, before the AccuPlacer was in place, the test that was used previously was called the Compass. So the AccuPlacer is a multiple choice, untimed, computerized test. It covers basic math and algebra, reading and writing. Um, basically, what you do is you register a ticket at the institution that you plan to attend. So um, typically, what you do is you apply for admission, and then it's scheduled, or information will be sent to you about the AccuPlacer and, and what you'll need to do to sign up for it. Now, we do offer the AccuPlacer testing at Winder Barrow High School for students who are interested in dual enrollment. 
So if we have that available in this long, we'll send information about that. Um, the next test is the ACT. Um, the ACT is one of the college admissions tests, and for more information on the ACT, you can go to www.actstudent.org. That's where you'll go to register. Um, the ACT rewards a strong grasp of material and content knowledge. The way it is scored is um, on a scale of 1 to 36, and there is no penalty for wrong answers. This test covers English, math, science, reading, and provides an optional writing test. And um, we'll have upcoming dates on the next slide. We do not offer the ACT at Winder Bear High School, but it is available at Appalachie. And so the next tests that are coming up are September 19th, and then when there are few dates in October. Um, if you do qualify for free or reduced lunch, then you can qualify for a fee waiver, and those are available through Ms. Long in the CRC. So these are the testing dates um, for this school year. You can see they've added a few test dates the school year. Typically, this would apply for juniors. Um, most students in 10th grade don't take the, SA, the ACT or the SAT unless they are planning on applying for dual enrollment at particular colleges. But uh, So this is information to kind of think ahead if you're a 9th and a 10th grader, but for definitely for juniors. The SAT is the other college, um, the other college admissions test that's used. It's available at www.collegeboard.org. This test rewards logic, creative thinking, and problem solving. The score range for this test is 400 to 1600, um, and there is no penalty for wrong answers, just like on the ACT. It covers math, reading, an optional essay. There is a vocabulary focus, um, words that students typically would use in college. And then we do offer this at Winder Barrow High School. Um, we'll have test dates on the next slide. But the next ones that are coming up soon are September 26th and October 3rd. Please note that the late registration deadline for the SAT is September 15th. And again, waivers are available for students who qualify for free or reduced lunch. These are the test dates for the SAT. Um, again, there's an optional essay. Um, and then the dates in bold are the ones that we'll be offering at Winder Barrow High School. Khan Academy is a resource that's available through um, a partnership with a college board. Khan Academy is amazing. It offers free online tutoring. If you take the PSAT, then it'll give you a personalized study plan. You can actually also take practice SAT tests at Khan Academy. Um, and then based on your results, it will also give you a personalized study plan that is available 24-7. Um, it is a free program and students and guardians can both make accounts. So, so most important is that you are here, that you are present, whether you are a digital learner or a face-to-face -face learner, that you are logging in or that you are attending every day and participating in your classes. Um, turn in your work. This is so critical for you. Always turn in your work. Zeros are the things that bring your grade down the fastest um, and the hardest thing to bring back up. So please make sure that you're always turning in your work. Connect and communicate with um, key players. We're talking about your teachers, your counselors. Um, reach out if you don't know what's, what, you're, what you need to be doing. If you don't understand something, please make sure that you're communicating and getting help. Um, ask questions. For us, make sure you make an appointment with us. We are here to help you. We want to help you. Um, we're excited to be working with you, whether it's virtually or in person. Um, we encourage you to check the student and the parent portal often. That way you can keep on top of your grades or your children's grades. And then uh, obviously make sure that you keep up with important dates. You can view most important dates on the Winder Bear High School website. A few things just to point out, we do have Google Classrooms for each class. So the class of 2021, 2022, 2023, and 2024. These are our Google Classroom codes. If you'd like to join them, we encourage you to. We'll be posting information in there relevant to your classes um, throughout the school year. So definitely stay counselor connected. And then we also want you to stay school connected. And there are ways to do that. So make sure that you are following us on Facebook, that you are following us on Twitter, and that you are following us on Instagram for all of the important updates and information. So um, anyway, we look 
forward to working with you this school year, and we're really excited um, and hope that you have a great school year. Thanks so much.